What's up? We back on another episode of Say Word Podcast. I got the Ohio State basketball legend, Boston College basketball legend, and assistant coach for the Memphis Grizzlies. How's it going today, Mr. Penn? It's good, man. I can't complain. Blessed, you know, with all that's going on. I'm blessed to be in the position I'm in. So, like, like you said, I say the same. You never hear me complain. Man, first of all, just I'd just like to appreciate you for taking time out your busy schedule to check in with me. I really appreciate appreciate the love. God bless you for real. Thank you. Let me just get to it real fast. Um, you being you being a professional athlete, um, obviously being an African American, do you feel like athletes have a supposed to use their platform with everything going on right now in society with the with with the younger adults looking up to them and just like you guys having a platform, do you feel like it's you guys' responsibility to to be verbal and do things about what's going on? I I wholeheartedly believe that. Um okay. I think a lot of athletes are doing that. I think this time around, more athletes are um, taking the initiative. But um, yeah, I'm a firm believer of using your platform, um, especially black athletes, because so many young black youth look up to black athletes uh, because at some point we were those kids. And now you're in a position to um, have a strong influence on the youth then I think you need to use your platform and speak out against, you know, racism and social injustice and all the above. Um, That's why I respect such guys that do it like LeBron James. Facts. He's unbelievable because he does. So yeah, without a doubt. And I know a lot of people don't feel that way, but I do. Um, Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Which I think is wrong, but you know, I'll let you go ahead and get into it. No, nah, I, I just want you to touch on that. Like, I mean, obviously with the NBA right now, like I have a lot of guys come on the show and you got Kyrie, he feels like he wouldn't play. Then you got some guys that feel like they should play, they, that they want to play. Then you got some guys that like, listen, if LeBron hooping, I'm hooping. Like, I'm going to mm-hmm. ask you this. Would you, would you play right now under the circumstances? Would you go to Florida right now and play? 100%. Um, okay. And, and I'm going to touch upon all of that. So you're going to respect what everyone wishes are. Um, so Kyrie, for his reasoning, you know, he thinks that it'll take away from what's going on. I personally don't. I understand if a player says, listen, what's going on with the coronavirus, I don't want to put my family in jeopardy or my health. I'm not going. I can respect that. But my opinion on what's going on in our society right now, mm-hmm. that basketball would take away from it, I don't believe that. I believe that if the NBA does not go back to play, if guys say I'm not playing, then you're not, you're not helping the cause. And okay. my reasoning to say that is because, for one, the platform that these guys are going to be on for the next three months is enormous. What they'll be able to do, and I know obviously because I work in a league, the things that guys are planning to do, what can be accomplished and, and get the ball rolling cannot be done without this. I understand where Kyrie was coming from saying, you know, the sponsorship and, 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 and owners, and we need to have them, you know, understand what's going on more and press the issue. But by not playing, you're not helping the issue. I understand the protesting. You know, we all want to be a part of it. We all can do our part, but there's different levels. Guys like LeBron, guys in the NBA, the fact that you have such a big platform, your notoriety is enormous, you have to use that. I'm not saying you shouldn't go ahead and protest and march. You should do that Mm -hmm. as well. But for someone that can be visible and with the name recognition, you need to be on a bigger platform because you can touch more people. And I think that's what the NBA can do. I think going back to play, I think that's what it can do. The NBA is trying their hardest. They're working with the players. They're working with the coaches to, uh, to enable that platform. And I think the NBA has done a pretty good job. I know there's a lot of areas they can improve on, but, through the past, they've done a pretty good job on letting their athletes speak out and be vocal, much better than other sports. And what we'll have here down in Orlando, guys will be, you know, the, the Black Lives Matter all over the floor. So if you're watching the game, yeah, that's dope. you'll see yeah. it. Yeah. Athletes can wear, they allow the athletes to wear whatever they want to wear. If they have a message they want to put out, they can wear that. So there'll be a lot of things put in motion. And realistically, the people that we want to touch, the people that have the power to make change, Guess what they're going to do? They're going to pay attention. They're going to watch these NBA games and see that. 
they're go- they're more likely. This is again my opinion. They're more likely to watch that and see what's going on than they will to turn on the TV or see a bunch of young people and black people marching. So, do I think it's very significant? I do think it is, and I think that guys would do a very good job, you know, their time in Orlando to get the message out because they care. I tell you that firsthand. They don't think that these athletes don't care. They care, and I think a lot of them were torn, like like Kyrie whether we should go or play or not. Yes, sir. But from a straight, you know, social issue reasoning, I think they should because it, it, it helps their platform tremendously. And if it does take away from them being a part and being a voice, that's not an NBA issue. That's a you personal issue. If it means that much to you, nothing should get in your way of standing up for what you believe in and fighting for it and speaking up on it. So, again, Kyrie's entitled to opinion. But if Kyrie was coming, you would tell me that if you come, that means you can't do no more. You can't speak out. You can't still be in the forefront. You really can. And if a player doesn't want to do that, then that's on him, not on what's going on. I'm glad you touched up on that. I'm very glad. I, I respect that. Let me get to some basketball real fast. Um, I, I didn't know. Are you from Massachusetts? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was born in New York. I'm born in Yonkers. Okay. Yeah, um, I'm from New York. And then yeah, okay. Little, yeah. So when mom was little, we moved up there. So, yeah, that's home, um, although Columbus has been home now for the last, you know, 20 years. Off season, I'm still back in Columbus, but, uh, you know, that, that B, I wear it hard on my chest. My Red oh. Sox, Patriots, Bruins, and Celtics, I love them. Okay, you went, you went to Salem High School? Um, yes. I, I assume you was a star there. Just, just explain just how I was growing up there, playing, being a star there. Mm-hmm. Um, you, being, you being five foot 11, and you, and you actually dominated on every level. Yeah. So just, I, just um, give me I'm, a little brief that. Yeah, I was blessed. You know, I played for good coaches, but, um, you know, played with a chip on my shoulder. A lot of people who know me, they know that football is my first love. So I got recruited oh, to real? play both football. I got recruited to play football and basketball. A lot of schools offered me both. Uh, but I came from a very good high school. You know, we wasted, okay. we won state championships. I lost seven games in four years, including tournaments. Wow. Uh, you know, I think I'm still the all-time leading scorer. I think I'm, like, number five in the state of Massachusetts still. Um, but I had a great career. I did. High school was great. I played for BABC, for AAU. And growing up, we always played against um, Riverside and the Gauchos. So I'm real good with, you know, Kareem Reed, you yeah, know, Sham God, you know, Steph Marbury. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, all yeah, of them. Yeah. So we all the same era. We grew up battling yeah. each other. It yeah, was great because yeah. then we met each other. We battled in high school. We battled in college. We battled yeah. on a professional level. And now we all coaching and we see That's each other. Crazy. We speak about those days. Uh, but, you know, it was – it was a thing where basketball is so global, so big now, it's crazy. But growing up, it was like New York City's the mecca. I already know. Like, if you want to you wanna test your game, you better be official in New York. And you better go against people from New York and make sure you can hang, hang with them. And if so, then you would be okay. And, and I've always believed that. Um, it's changed these days. It really has changed. But yes. um, New York is terrible now. The comp- yeah, it's mm-hmm. not as good as it should be. It's listen, not, and, I, and it listen, starts with the youth. Listen, I'm from not the country. I'm from New York, right? And um, I grew up like Mike James is my cousin. Um, yeah, okay. So yeah, me and him Mike. grew up. Me and him grew up together, and I they like they talk very very highly about you. They were like, yo, like Scooney could play. He could. He five eleven, but he could go. So like the New York guys talk very very highly about you because I'm around all of them, and they talk mm-hmm. like highly. You saying he should have been in the league for such and such time and. It's, it's, it's politics. They'd be like, Scooney should have been in the league with us because he could play, play. How, did, how does that make you yeah. feel that the, that your peers respect you on that level? No, no, it's official. And and I know those guys, and they've always shown me respect. And it's not it was, shit, I earned it. You know what Fact. I'm saying? Because when you step in front of guys, like I said, like you wanted to battle and show what you could do. And, you know, my era, we Boston, we was good. We was beating the New York teams. We won the Nationals. We had good players. We had All-Americans. <laughs> um, but it was a big thing, you know, to get the respect of those guys, and I definitely appreciate it. But I had a choice to make. I got drafted by Atlanta. I was with them for a hot second. But then what people don't know was a couple years later, I had a three-year deal with Milwaukee Bucks that I turned down. Wow, wow. That, it, was, it, was, it was in July, and I, before I was supposed to go sign my contract, um, I decided against it. And reason being is at this time now, I was 25, 25 26. I had my son was born already. And I'm thinking to myself, well, I just came off a great year in Europe. We went to the Euro League, okay. using I think the final eight. 
I was got MVP a couple times. I was killing. So my money went high. So it was one of those things where I said, if you go to the league, you can go to the league and be 10th, 12th man, not know how much you're going to play. Or mm -hmm. you can stay in Europe because now I had to decide whether it's going to be Olympiacos, Panathinaikos, Maccabi, Barcelona, all the top clubs. And I was going to make three times the amount of money in one year. Wow. So for me, it was as much as I love ball and the league and all of that, I love playing more. And I said, for me, I'm going to go over here and be the number one and get to play and showcase my skills and make more money or go to the league just to say I'm in the league and not knowing how much I'm going to play or be on the bench. Because what I – obviously, I know what happens. I know how this game works. I understand the politics. If you look at a lot of guys, they sit on the bench for years. And then when their contract is up, they miss out because a lot of them try to come to Europe where I was at, and they couldn't get the That's money crazy. I was getting. They couldn't get on the top teams. And I understood this. So I was like, yo, I got a good niche. I got a good thing. I had a Nike deal. And I was like, you know what? I'm okay where I am. You know, at the time I looked at my girl who became my wife and I was like, yo, what you want to do? She's like, whatever you think is best, let's do it. And at the time I was like, look, I need to make as much money as possible because I want to take care of my family and put myself in a position where I'm, I'm good. But more than anything, I don't want to sit on a bench behind people. I'm in the prime. I can't be on a bench. I want to play. So I decided to go back overseas instead of playing in the league. And Yo, I'm that's, okay with that. That's great. But I, I'm, I'm glad you touched on that because um, I was going to ask you, what advice would you give a, a young prospect that has a mm -hmm. kind of have the same similar situation? Because a lot yeah. of guys, like I had, um, I had Daniel Ewing on the show a couple weeks ago. Okay, yeah. And, and D. Ewing's like, man, like I, I would have rather, I would have rather played in the league, but I got more money overseas. So it was like I stayed in Russia because yeah, I knew I, I know I money. I knew I was. Yeah. Yeah, I knew I was gonna play. But you know, a lot of guys, this new generation, they like, you know how it is. You, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So it, here's it, the it's thing. Like, here's the thing, right? I, I get it. Our dream is to play in the league. You know what I'm saying? We all wanna play in the league. That's the thing. We all grew up doing that. We were all thinking that in our head. But if you become an adult and you realize what's important to you and me, I will play ball if I wasn't getting paid. That's just wow. the love of the game that I have. That's so dope. for me to sit there and just be in the league, just to say I'm in the league and be on the bench, that wasn't enough for me. I needed to play. That's where I'm happy. Get me on the court. When I get in between them lines, I get to transform. And that's the feeling that that's why I played the game as a kid all the way through my adulthood because of the way it made me feel. I would have been miserable sitting on someone's bench. I've talked to them. A lot of my guys who've done that, if they could do it all over again, they would have wow. chosen to go play because they wasted three, four years you so and your you prime. Bench, and time your, here and yeah. There. yeah. yeah you and then your when you're done, they it's done with you. It's a wrap. And now you're trying to make money somewhere else. And eh, well, guys already made their niche. And now you can't come get – now you got to play in a low-level team. And that's what happened to a lot of guys. So, you know, but for the guys that, that are in that situation, you got to go what makes you feel good, what makes you happy. And understand, it can't be about the money. If the money is all it's about, you're always going to end up in trouble. You got to go what makes you feel happy, makes you feel good. So if you're in a good situation – then you're going to work. You believe in yourself. You're in a good situation. You're going to work. You're going to get better. The money always catches up. Okay. You don't go chasing the money. If you chase the money for a couple extra thousand here, a couple extra thousand there, it's not worth it. Your happiness, where you're going to play, be able to showcase your skills and be in a position to make more money, that's the important part. And that's why I'm glad I did what I did. And this is advice that I gave a lot of young guys coming after me. Like, listen, I understand. Do the lead thing. But if the league ain't guaranteeing you your money early on, they're going to use you as a pawn because they need guys to come to camp. Now you're a camp guy, and then you get wow. cut in October, and now you don't get a job because all the jobs are taken up in, November, in August and September. So People don't know that. You it's be funny you said that. Man, it, people don't, no I'm, glad see, I, I'm glad you touched on it because a lot of guys that, that's going through things like this, and that's why, that's why I, I like to have this platform because I hear all different types of stories and – like my cousin Mike, he played overseas first. And he'd be like, man, like it's it's yeah. a war out there, man. He's like, it's a war. He's like, the whole yeah, so. business is yeah, is, yeah. is is like they will use you up, and you be in your prime, and you you got to think more like an adult. Sometimes you got to be a little bit more realistic, and and that's just the way it is. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I a lot of these I, guys I, don't have good people in their corner. That's the problem. Yeah, that's a, the wrong yeah, that's people. a fact. Yeah. I I was gonna ask you that, like having a supporting cast, like how does that mm -hmm. affect like your just your like your life and and 
and just yeah. just just your your well being because you probably yeah. had the supporting cast. Some a lot of like a lot of guys don't have that supporting class to be like, listen, don't do this. I don't yeah. think you should do that. You know how it is. Great question. No, no, it, it, it's real. I um, I had a good agent. Yo, my agent was good, and I think an agent is very valuable. Um, but at the end of the day, your agent works for you. You have to, and and I'm good that I had good basketball people in my life to help me with some of the decisions. And 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 then you got to take it upon yourself to take a step back and realize what's good and what's not good. So for me to make these decisions, it was when I went to Europe for the first time and I started to see what was going on, the value that I had, now I use my value as leverage to make more money, okay. put myself in a better situation. And just like Mike said, you got to think business-like. There's yeah. money involved. It's not a kid game. And I was able to grasp that really quick and use that to my advantage because I used the league to help leverage, get me more money in Europe. Wow. I used Europe to leverage me to try to get a contract in the league. Okay. Because at the end of the day, everybody's working for you because you're the ball player. You got the leverage. But what, what happens with a lot of guys is they say they, they have an agent. And what their agent is doing is trying to have them place them somewhere because they get their cut. That's why it's important to have people to say, you know what? What's, you have to look at that team I'm going to. How do they pay? Do they pay on time? They might give you X amount of dollars or say you get X amount of dollars, but they don't pay a lot of guys all their money. You got to look at your contract, what to put in your contract or what not to put in your contract. Going to Europe, you got to say, hey, if I sign and pass my test, am I physical? Well, I need 10% of my money up front. Wow. Now okay. I got money in the game. So now if I go to T want to pay some bull crap, well, I already got money from y'all and I'm going to get some more checks. You want to act funny? Well, that's your loss, not mine. So these are things that I learned as I went along that I had leverage. Well, if you got a family to bring, well, hey, my kids need to go to school. Well, I need you to pay for their school as well. I need an extra car for my wife as well. Wow. I didn't know you could do all that. Negotiate. You can do all of that because just like any other contract, you can negotiate, add. Instead of giving me four first-class tickets for travel for my family, no, give me 10 economy tickets so this way – if my family and I want to go back and forth, or I want family to come visit, I got their ticket. So these are things that I learned and things that I put in my contract year after year. And it made me more comfortable with beneficial for me. And it protected me even to where if I don't get paid after 15 days on time, yo, my contract is void. I don't have to practice. I don't got to show up to nothing until my money is paid. And this is stuff again, that you got to know people. You got to understand contracts, which a lot of guys don't understand contracts. A fact. They let yeah, other people do it for them. Well, I learned that, you know what? I got to look at my own stuff and I got to figure it out because at the end of the day, they're working for me. And if I let them take control of it, they're going to place me wherever they want quickly so they can get their money and move on to their next player. So it's like anything else, man. It's a business at the end of the day. That's crazy. I, I'm, I'm going to go back to college for a minute. What happened at Boston College? Ah, because I'm good. saying like Nothing. I think you won like Biggie's. What you won like Biggie's Player of the Year yeah. or something? I was Biggie's Rookie of the Year. I was like, all Biggie's, and then and my then sophomore bounced. year we won the tournament. Well, here what happened? Bounced. Yeah, it was crazy because we won the Biggie's tournament my sophomore year, and we was we won Biggie's the the, the, I the regular season. I remember. So what happened was I'm at the I'm in my at my place chilling. I turn on the news. I see my coach walking around St. John's Arena at Ohio State. So what happened was. The coach had left. He went to Ohio State. What okay. happened, we had a really good recruiting class coming in. Everybody bounced from the recruiting class. We had guys graduating. Daniel Abrams was gone. Okay. You know what I'm saying? We had – but we still had 40. You know, Dwayne Wilber was still there, Antonio okay. Granger, but then they was going to be leaving. So now you look at the cupboard, it was bare. It was just me. Everybody was leaving. The dudes in my class all transferred. So I was looking like, damn. Mm -hmm. Everybody bounced, and people don't understand. Like, so everyone looked at me like, "Yo, nigga, how are you gonna leave? You from here? Everything is laid out for you." Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, yeah. the day I was like, "Nigga, I gotta win. I can't do this by myself. And if I want to make money on the next level, I gotta win some games to have win. a team." That's a fact. That's and we fact. ain't had that no more. So um, it was hard to leave. I tell you that much. It was hard, but um, it was a great decision. Ohio State was a good move for me. Uh, things worked out. And uh, I'm just blessed that it did because it was really hard for me to leave home uh, where, I, where I always had success. But at the same time, I was like, I can't, I can't, 
I can't sit make around while this ship is what well, is is, is yeah, that's a fact. I don't want to be a... stuck on it. So that's what happened. So you went to Ohio State, and you guys yeah. arguably, probably, probably, arguably top five best backcourt duo in college yeah. basketball history. Michael Red played with my cousin in Milwaukee. Yo, know, he's like a class act. Yeah. Oh man, class Thank act dude. Just, 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 just describe playing with him like a. A yeah. young Michael Red, left-handed shooting. Yeah. Oh, he's retarded with the three. Oh man, y'all killed. Man, but but you, what you understand was he wasn't though. Were <laughs> he was not. He was a horrible shooter in college. That's he shot great. a slingshot. He he improved in his and he got to the league. He watched Ray Allen. He okay. watched how Ray okay. Allen worked, and that's how he improved and got better. But playing with Mike was a blast. You know what I'm saying like so when I got there, he was coming as a freshman, and what we did was we would stay after practice and play one on one. Like okay. he and I would work out all the time and we'd work on our crossover. I would show him different moves, you know, cause he didn't, he didn't have all that in his bag, but the kid worked, worked, worked and was determined. And we just carried that onto the court. And we knew when it came to game time, coach, the ball's going to be in my hand or his hand and everybody else is filling the role. And, and that's just how we rock. But Mike to this day, still one of my good friends. Talked Class about long ago. It's kind of cool because you know, those are uh, NBA jam shirts. Um, mm -hmm. that they always make mm -hmm. well there's a store in ohio that made them and they got me and mike on it and they okay, sell like okay. crazy you know what i'm saying you know for the backcourt but now nah, mike i'm happy the person the play that he turned out to be because i'll tell you the kid worked on his game he became one of the better shooters in the league but in college if you wanted him to do anything you wanted him to shoot the three ball that was his weakest thing was his shooting Nobody would have thought, nobody, until you saying that, I would have never thought that. The way he shoots, like, lights out, you always would have thought yep. he's shooting, like, 50% when he's in college. Like, you know, college is easier. So, nope. Always he was think, maybe 30%, maybe 30%. Shoot. Wow. Wow. Exactly. So, that tells you how hard that young man worked on his game, on his craft, and then became an all-star and, and, and one of the best shooters in the league. Let me ask you this. I mean, I know you're coaching with the Grizzlies right now. Um mm -hmm. What's what's the difference between being a coach and being a player? Now that you're a coach, and you mm -hmm. kind of, it it, it got to be a little strange because at one point you was the player. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. it, it's a difference. You you kind of behind. Explain the transition. Just explain the transition. To go um, from the, player to the, NBA. the transition was cool. It's cool because I don't work. This okay. is not work for me. I never worked a day in my life because I'm doing what I love to do, and that's basketball. But it's kind of weird sometimes because you still have the itch to play. You always do. But Father Time catches up with you, and you don't get to play on the same level. But, um, but, but being able to coach is the next best thing because now I got these young guys here, you know, whether it's John Morant, Jaron Jackson, you know, Brandon Clark. You know, we got young players and the impact I can have on them. We work on their game like we just got done a little while ago. But more than anything, the relationship – that I get to build with them besides basketball. The stuff I get to talk to them about, the experiences that I went through basketball-wise, the business, things that they will encounter, that's the valuable stuff. Um, and being an ex-player, it comes different from you. The players respect a little more than the guys that didn't play on a high level, that don't understand what it feels like to be in the trenches. Well, they look at a guy like, well, shit, you've been there, so I will listen to you. So for me, <laughs> that is so valuable, and, and I love the process every day, going to work, working out with these guys, teaching them, but also learning from them because they, they know a little different stuff, and I still learn from them. They learn from me, and when you watch them go out there and perform and play well, which we've had good success this year, you understand what all that hard work is for. So for me, coaching, is this is fun. It's the closest thing I can get to from being a player, so I'm all in on it. That's that's funny you said that. I mean, because that the the young guy you got over there at Memphis is oh man, this this John Morant Superstar. kid. And I mean, I, I know you work with him all the time. Like, I mean, I I've never and I was telling people about Son. I was like, yo, I'm, I told my cousin yeah. like, yo, the little youngin from Murray State. I was like, yo, he's special, man. I didn't know, man. but I didn't I didn't know he's gonna be able to like transition to the league like oh, that. Yeah. I mean, I knew he was nice, but I didn't think he was gonna be able to like. Cause he's special. Just touch up on him, cause he's special. Yeah. So everyone can see his athleticism, his explosiveness. He's right-handed, but he goes left a lot. He can finish like he rather goes left. It's kind of weird how he does what he does. Two things. 
Never mind all of that. The two things that make him who he is is one, he's an ultimate competitor and he plays with a chip on his shoulder. He doesn't give a damn who he is playing in front of. He's going for blood. He is more like a – if you dropped him off in our era, mm-hmm. we played in the 90s, early 2000s, he would fit in perfect. He's okay. not about being buddy-buddy like that NBA thing is now. Oh, so he's not like what he's like, new – he's not, he's not no, like what he's new no. dudes. Okay, facts. He don't got that. He's okay. that – he look at the schedule, and he got it all circled. He got Dame Lillard. He got Kyrie. You know what I'm saying? He got Chris Paul. He I got like LeBron. That. You I name like it. That. That's yeah, what like he's that. doing, and he he shows up for that. He don't care. He don't care. He ain't going to dap you up, have all kind of conversations. He's going to give you respect, but he's wow. going to go take his. But for me, the number one thing for him that, that, that puts him where he is, he's such a student of the game. His IQ is so good. He, it'll be early in the game. He'll come to me out of timeout, and he's telling me what they're doing. He can understand how people are guarding him. He understands where he might be able to exploit his talent. The way he sees the game, it's unbelievable. He's a student in the game, and that's what's going to take him. Yeah, there's tons of guys in the league that are athletic. They're explosive. They can do everything. That's why it's the league. There's a lot of great athletes. But there's a short list of guys mentally have it too. He has it physically, and he has it mentally. And he's always at an even keel. And that's what makes that kid special. I was going to touch on that. I was going to ask you, do you feel like the NBA lacks fundamentals now? I had, um, I had, yeah. I, I believe, I, I, I think it was Lil John John, Lil John Lucas. Um, yep. he, he was on the show a couple weeks ago and he was like, Jojo, it's crazy because a lot of these young guys can't do, can't do simple plays. They don't really understand yep. like one, two, three. And just, just touch up on that. Do you feel like that hurts the NBA right now? Or do you feel yeah. like it just, it is what it is? Well, it is what it is because at the end of the day, the NBA, the way the game is now, it's about scoring and athleticism and, and a lot of big plays. You know what I'm saying? So now, How the NBA is now is you're a specialist, right? You can play. If you're a guy who can shoot a knockdown shooter, you can play. If you're a 6'8 wing and, you know, you can can defend, then you're a defender. You're a stretch four now. You can shoot the ball. So now it's about being a specialist. A lot of these guys wouldn't survive in the old NBA because the old NBA, when we grew up, you had to be able to shoot, dribble, pass, play D. Facts, facts. Everything. Now, if you look at it, they're taking these young guys, 19 years old, they do one thing good, and you think you can teach them all the other stuff. Some get it, some don't. But the talent is so through the roof that it works for today's game. That's why the rules changed for today's game. If the rules were like they were before, you wouldn't see some of these guys in the league. That's for damn sure. Because they don't have all the pieces. So just like Lucas said, he's 100% right. Why? Because yeah, he said it's crazy now. there's no more teaching. Yeah. The teaching has changed. These kids, I know because my son is in it, they play AAU ball. They don't have a coach where they're in the gym working out teaching them. All they do is play games. Wow. So they don't get it as a young kid. They start playing too many games at a young age instead of back in the day, you practice all week to play on the weekend. Now they play all week and they play all weekend. So where do they work in their game? Where do they get to learn? And that carries into high school to college. Then they get to college and now they get maybe one year, then they're out. Now you get to the league. Now you got to learn a whole nother game. Yeah, it's different. So it's different. I think it starts. It starts in the youth basketball. The youth has changed, which now changes college, which changes the NBA. Are you Are you tough on your son? I know you being the coach, like, it's, oh yeah. I, I, I know he probably be like, man, like, how is that? No, he's good. How, I, I how was, is... I was, I was tough on him when he was younger. Okay. Now my son, we're gonna decide. He probably go to IMG or Sunrise Christian for his last year. He has a lot of D1 offers. Okay. I was hard on him as hell when he was little. Okay. Um, and mom used to oh, we used to fight over it. We used to get in arguments. I wouldn't talk to my wife for a week because of it. Because what I did was I was planting a seed. Facts. I planted the seed. It's crazy because when he was six years, he was in the sixth grade, sixth, seventh grade, we would wake up in the morning and we would go to school and work out before he would go to school. He's wow. only kid doing it. And he did it. He would do it. And he would have to wake me up to go to the gym. I said, if I got to wake you up, we're not going. I right. need you to want it more than I want it. So then as being hard on him, when he got to high school, when he hit, you know, when he hit about 15, the mm-hmm. light bulb went off. The stuff that I was teaching him and that I taught him and the way that I, I worked with him, 
he was already ahead of the curve with a lot of other kids because he got a different type of teaching. It wasn't just to play games. I would some morning just, we would walk through stuff. I would okay. break down pick and roll coverages or what he should see. We'd watch film. And then mom changed her whole mindset because now he got, he became the number one freshman in the state of Ohio. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then, Mom's and then on board now. She, Mom's on board now. Yeah, yeah, she's on board yeah, now. Yeah. Then she yeah. said to me, she said to me, she said, you know what? I get it. I understand what you were doing before. But, you know, okay, I get it. You didn't understand at the time. But um, as a dad, I'm hard on all my kids. I got two younger girls as well. And I'm okay. hard on them with just what they do in life. I'm hard on my kids academically. I'm hard on my kids and what they do out here in society. Because we need to be hard on our kids. Like I always tell them, I'm sure you heard it. Because we all heard it. What your what parents say, I'm not your friend. Yeah, right? My, my, so they got to, you know real. what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's real. I, I definitely, I was going to ask you not to cut you. I was going to ask you, how is it just traveling so much yeah. and still able to, because my, my dad's a bishop. My dad's a bishop in New York. So a lot of times mm -hmm. he had to travel. So yeah. it's hard. It's hard when your father's not home. I mean, I'm going to keep it real. I, it's tough. It's tough. It's tough. And, I, and I'm glad, like, that's why I was hesitant. I was okay being in Columbus for those years. I was mm -hmm. hesitant to get back in the coach, and I waited a minute. Then I got an Ohio State staff, which is great. I was home. But yeah. to come out here was okay because now my youngest is 15 now. So when I left, she was 14. So I laid my foundation down. My kids understand what it is. When they can, they come out here. They spend time in Memphis with me. When I get a chance, I go back to Columbus, be with them. Um, they, they, so when we go play on that side. If we play Indianapolis or Cleveland, they're going to come to the game, stuff like that. So we make it work. They understand dad got a job to do to make sure that they can have the things that they want and need. Um, but it works out. But with technology is great because once a week we have our conference, me and the yeah, kids, yeah, yeah. we get on, we all FaceTime and we talk. I need to know about your week. I need to know what's going on. You know, me and mom's is in line. Some going in school at the house. I know what's going on. So it can work and it has to work. And we do a good job of making it work. Okay. I'm going to ask you a couple more questions. Then I'm going to let you go. What's like life after basketball? For you right now, um, it's 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 a blessing, man. It's good. I I think that uh, I enjoyed all my playing years, but I love being a father. Um, just watching the growth of my kids and what they go through and being part of their life, but then also still be able to do basketball. Um, I got a good barber shop. I got stuff that I own and do in Columbus that that does okay. well. Um, so that was my thing. I knew one day the ball was gonna stop bouncing, and I was okay with that. But while I was playing, I was making sure that I set up myself after basketball I would have something to do like I'm a very active individual I like to do shit so for me one thing I do now is I golf okay I golf all the time I can we go to Orlando I'm bringing my clubs and that's what we're gonna do when I off time I'm gonna be golfing um I golf as much as I can that 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 takes my itch because I'm not gonna be out there hooping all the time uh but life after basketball you know you would think like your life is when you're hooping but I still have so much growing to do as an individual. Um, and I've been doing it lately, and, and, I, and I really love it. I love where I am, though, after basketball. Okay, I'm going to put you on the spot real fast, ask you a couple questions, put you on the mm -hmm. hot seat. Cool. Give me, give, me your, give, me, give me your top five NBA players right now. Oh, right now? Oh, right now. LeBron James. Okay. The Greek Freak. Yeah, okay. LeBron, the Greek Freak. Kawhi Leonard. Okay. I'm going to go with... Steph went healthy. Okay. Well, no, no, hold on. I'm taking – Steph is borderline. KD went healthy for Ooh. sure. Okay, okay. And now and now for my fifth spot, I, I, James Harden because Ooh. Steph ain't playing. You like James Harden game? Did. You like his game? No, be, okay. be, be real. I'm going to like no, I'm gonna be behind you. I don't. I That's don't, what I'm about to say. Like, I hate his game, but it. I love him. You, you have to. You have to respect it. He might be the most unique scorer – that we've ever seen. And I know because we have to scout this dude to play him. He is so hard. What people don't understand is James Harden is one of the strongest guards to ever play yeah, this game. Yeah, he's tough. There's not a guard. I don't know if there's another guard that has ever been as strong as he is. He's 6'6", and he's strong. Yeah, he, he can like, handle the rock. Yeah. He can shoot it. He can finish in the paint. He just don't play no D. But James Harden got – his game is hard to watch because it's just like – Bing, bing, it's all bing, over bing, the place. Yeah, bing, it's, bing. but it's it's like all over the place, and it's like I can't see. I live in Houston. So I can't see them winning like nothing with that. No, I agree. I, can't I agree. See that, but, like, but the man is tough, though. He's tough, and I, I would say him or Steph. 
I like James Lillard. I mean, there's so many guys, but how can you take that from James Harden? Man, what he can do, not too many guys in the league can do that. Is that ever played the game? That's a fact. So, yeah, that's okay, now I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna give you a last question. This this the hot seat. You gotta give me a t- give me a top five players from Ohio. Oh, from the state of Ohio, LeBron James is one. Okay. Um, the history you're talking about. I was just saying general because I, I was gonna use I was gonna use Massachusetts, but I, I went with Ohio. No, we could you... either we could do either. We could do either, but I'll uh, go Ohio. I'm gonna both, go do both, do both, because I always act place. LeBron James, okay. I'm gonna say I'm gonna even go old school. Clark Kellogg is from Ohio. He's one of the Facts. best high school players ever. Um Facts. then I'm gonna say, oh, it's so hard. They got a lot of good ass players. I had some Maki Walker. Samaki I was going to say Samaki, but he is. But he was on the show. He gave me a crazy list. Oh, yeah, but man, Samaki's on the outside. List. Calvin Booth's on the outside. You, you know, people forget OJ Mayo is from Ohio. Ooh, Trey I didn't Burke. Know that. Trey, Trey Burke won National Player of the Year. He's from Ohio. Jared Sullinger. Ooh. Uh, I would say Jared Sullinger I'm putting up there because he was two time player of the year, number one player in the country coming out of high school. Um, yeah, I got to go Jaron, LeBron. Clark Kellogg. Shit, Ron Harper's from Ohio. Ooh, I uh, forgot Ron Harper's from – he is from Ohio. Yeah, I'm mean, like, I'm saying, uh, that's one thing. The state of Ohio was big. You got to forget, like, remember the Cleveland, Cincinnati. Michael Columbus, Cage. Michael, Samaki said – Samaki had Michael Cage on his list. Yeah, he's from there, too. I didn't, I didn't even know he's from Ohio. Yeah, he's tough. I didn't but, know but, he was but, from But Ohio. we got to – but if we go back, you got guys like John Havlicek. You got – you know, Ooh. you got the old school dudes. A lot of them are from Ohio. You know what I'm saying? So it's tough. But if I go my, my Boston, then it's got to be Patrick Ewing. Okay. Pa- Patrick Ewing. For me, Patrick Ewing, Travis Best. Oh, Travis Best. Oh, man, he was so nice. Yeah, exactly. Georgia yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Ramil Robinson. Ramil Robinson. Yo, he was nice too with the Michigan. People yeah. forget about it. Then I'm going to go. I'm going to be biased because although we battled, he's still one of my favorite ever. Never mind his college. His college career was dope, but not pro. Wayne Turner, who is from, from um, Kentucky, Kentucky. Oh, you the same yeah. class. We came up against oh, each other. Okay. Like yeah, we yeah, was yeah, neck yeah. and neck. Yeah, you know Wayne what I'm saying? Nice. And then Wayne was crazy. Randall Jack, Chris Heron. I know people see the Chris Heron story. That's my son. Yeah, co- that's I, my guy. Yeah. I tell white people he's the coldest white boy I ever played with. He's the white coldest boy. white boy I ever played with. He was crazy. Yo, Skip so, used to always tell me story. Skip, my boy Skip used to yeah, always tell me story. Yeah. He's like, yo, this white boy is retarded. I'm telling you, he could play, man. Like, Skip used to always tell us yeah. stories about him. Like, he's like the truth, man. I forgot. Yeah, when they was out in Fresno, he was with Rafe. Yeah, he from, he from out. We play, hey, we all on the same team together coming up. Yeah. And it was crazy. That's why we would play everybody and smack everybody. Our team was crazy. So, yeah, man, just there's a lot of talent in these states, man. The basketball wise, man, it's all over the place, man. I got I got one more question, then I'm gonna let you go. Yeah. You got you gotta give me the player that 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 kind of gave you the toughest challenge whenever you had to play. That dude that you was like, man, I don't feel like playing against this dude. Every time I ask people this question, yeah, I get the craziest answers, man. No, no, I got I got it. I got I already know my answers. And my answers, there's probably three dudes. Okay. There's three. And I'm gonna take it all. I mean, it was yeah, okay. It was tough playing against Iverson. Iverson was bananas ooh, ooh. in college because I played against AI high school, college. It was crazy. He was one of them. But for me, that one dude, Steph Marbury, man, because we the son. same class. Yeah, Steph, he... Steph for me, and I've always said it. Steph should be an NBA Hall of Famer. Steph had as a point guard. Steph was one of the point guards who had everything. He could wow. handle, he could shoot it, he was strong, he's athletic, he could play D, high IQ. I mean, there's some shit happening in the pros, but Steph Facts. stayed the course. Steph would be an NBA Hall of Famer. He had he had no weaknesses in his game. So for me, it was Steph, Wayne Turner, and another New York City dude, Kareem Reed. Oh, he's from the Bronx. Yeah. Yeah, Reed. Yeah. yeah Kareem was Kareem tough Reed, and he was but... small. He's small, small tough as a mother. I'm telling you, man. I love playing against Kareem. I'm telling yeah. you. Even like Sham, all them dudes was like, you know what I'm saying? It was it was official. And that's what I think playing against them, like you know you had to bring it. So Facts. I knew if I played against them and I was okay, I'ma see anybody else. I didn't care who it was. But those fact. dudes what they made me raise my level of play. 
That's a fact. Listen, man, I appreciate you coming on the show. As much love, I no appreciate doubt. it. Another, another episode of Say Word. Mr. Penn, appreciate it, man. Much love to you. Respect. I'll talk Thank to you, you another time, my man. Benjamin Franklin, my only friend. 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 Only friend. Only friend. Benjamin Franklin, my only friend. Only friend. Only friend. Benjamin Franklin, my 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 only friend. Benjamin Franklin, my